have been working on a story about Oumuamua, the first known interstellar object to visit our solar system in October of 2017. Four years later, the debate continues whether it was a likely nitrogen iceberg as suggested by some scientists or possibly an alien spacecraft, a light-powered craft from an advanced civilization, if you will, as argued by at least two Harvard scientists. As part of that, I've been reading again Arthur C. Clarke's 1973 classic Rendezvous with Ram about an eerily similar, if much bigger, interstellar object named after, yes, Ram of the Hindu pantheon. It is such a thrill to come across this passage early on in the book, quite like Ram, which Clark wrote, traveled at 100,000 kilometers per hour, Oumuamua whisked through our solar system at 92,000 kilometers per hour. Extraordinary. Then the orbit was calculated and the mystery was resolved to be replaced by a greater one. 31 slash 439 was not traveling on a normal asteroidal path along an ellipse which it retraced with clockwork precision every few years. It was a lonely wanderer among the stars making it first and last to visit the solar system. For it was moving so swiftly that the gravitational field of the sun could never capture it. It would flash inward past the orbits of Jupiter, Mars, Earth, Venus and Mercury, gaining speed as it did so until it rounded the sun and headed out once again into the unknown. For a few days, the news media made a fuss over the visitor, but they were badly handicapped by the sparsity of information. Only two facts were known about Ram, its unusual orbit and its approximate size. Even this last was merely an educated guess based upon the strength of the radar echo. Through the telescope, Ram still appeared as a faint 15th magnitude star, much too small to show a visible disk. But as it plunged in toward the heart of the solar system, it would grow brighter and larger month by month before it vanished forever. The orbiting observatories would be able to gather more precise information about the shape and size. There was plenty of time and perhaps during the next few years some spaceship on its ordinary business might be rooted close enough to get good photographs. An actual rendezvous was almost unlikely. The energy cost would be far too great to permit physical contact with an object cutting across the orbits of the planets at more than 100,000 kilometers an hour. That's the end of those passages that I was telling you about. What is extraordinary about those passages written nearly 50 years ago by one of the greatest science fiction writers, Arthur C. Clarke, is that it could well be said about Oumuamua. Stand by for my detailed story in the next few days on my entire reports.